If you've been following the electric car world for any length of time, you might have heard about Faraday Future, a California-based company that's been known in the past for some pretty lavish reveal events at CES in Las Vegas, at which it's proudly talked about how it's different to every other automaker out there, and how, unlike the competition, it has what it takes to accelerate the transition to electric, fully autonomous, connected cars. You might also know it's a company plagued with financial woes, failing to meet any of its promised production goals. We were all supposed to be seeing or driving the FF91 electric car by now and becoming entangled in some pretty big legal cases over funding and financial management. But less than a week after we reported that it was selling off many of its land assets in an attempt to scrape together as much cash as possible to restart production of its first electric car, it appears Faraday Future may have a new saviour in the form of internet gaming company The Nine. But rather than save the company, it looks like this deal might just allow the FF91 to exist with a different name. I'm going to go over what we know of the deal in a moment and why I just said what I said, but first, let's look back at Faraday Future's very complicated history. Its original primary backer and company CEO, Chinese billionaire YT Jia Yuting, who made his fortune with Chinese tech company Le Echo, got into trouble with Chinese authorities over massive debts and refused to go back to his home in China in order to face his debtors. He was added to a national debtor blacklist and had what assets remained in China seized. A stream of high-end executives with Impressa former employers ranging from Apple and Tesla to Jaguar Land Rover, BMW and more began to leave the company. Groundwork at the site of Faraday Futures' planned production facility north of Las Vegas, Nevada was abruptly halted. And we started to hear tales of businesses large and small chasing up unpaid bills from Faraday Future. Then in 2017, a $2 billion lifeline was thrown to the company in the form of an investment from Chinese investment company Evergrande Health. In exchange for equity, it set out a three-year investment plan which it said would help bring the fully autonomous 1,000 horsepower FF91 luxury electric SUV to market. An initial $800 million payment was made with the rest being contingent on certain goals being met. Faraday Future burnt through the initial funds pretty quickly and, according to court filings, failed to meet the required targets to receive further cash injection. It got messy, with all kinds of counterclaims going backwards and forwards revolving around Evergrande's health's investment, the amount of control it had on Faraday Future's purse, and the refusal of YT to step down as company CEO. The disputes ended up with arbitration in Hong Kong, which then resulted in Faraday Future earning permission to seek $500 million in funding from another source, but it also lost the request to force Evergrande Health to loosen its grip on the company. Late last year, after most of its staff were either laid off or had their salaries drastically cut, a federal judge in California court froze YT's ownership stake in Faraday Future, as well as issue a protective order on various property-owned by him in the state. And in January this year, YT was ordered by a Shanghai court to pay off more than $78 million of debt to a private equity firm that he'd borrowed money from uh, back in 2015. Which brings us back to the present and the news that Faraday Future may, just may, like a cat, get another life. According to the press release detailing the agreement, The Nine, an online game operator which rose to fame when it gained an exclusive license to operate and distribute World of Warcraft in China, has signed a joint venture agreement that will see the two companies work together to manufacture, market, distribute and sell electric cars in China. Under the agreement, The Nine will send up to $600 million spread over three installments to the joint venture. Meanwhile, Faraday Future will allow the joint venture to use a piece of land it owns in China to produce electric cars. It will also grant the new joint venture an exclusive license to make its, quote, brand new V9 model and other potential selected models in China. New model? Yeah, you heard me right. This is the first I've ever heard of it as well, and the V9, and I suspect it's the same for you. It's not clear what this vehicle will be, and there are zero photos of it that I can find. But it's worth noting that this is a car Faraday Future is stating will be a new flagship luxury autonomous vehicle based on, quote, 
the technology and design concepts of the FF91. That's some pretty vague language and suggests to me that this is going to be either a lookalike to the FF91 or a sibling, with the 9 part of the name a hat tip to the 9. According to the press release, the joint venture has a goal of producing 300,000 cars a year, with the first pre-production car due to roll off the production line next year. As for Faraday Future? Well, it's important to note that this deal, like those before it, will be contingent on several important goals being met. And while Faraday Future CEO YT said in the official statement that we'll see the FF91 launch in 2019, followed by a more mass market premium FF81 shortly thereafter, it's worth noting that Faraday Future itself is still supposedly stupidly cash strapped. It sold off the majority, if not all, of its US land, and it's now leasing back the headquarters that it once owned. And yes, while many news outlets are calling this a potential way for Faraday Future to bring the FF91 to market, something Faraday Future seems to be hinting at in today's press release, there's something else I should note here. Right now, this deal with The Nine will see Faraday Future get an initial investment from The Nine of 5 million US dollars. While that seems like a lot of money from most people's standpoint, I mean, it is, it's worth noting that Faraday Future blew through $800 million in less than a year. The rest of these funds will need to be released only if Faraday Future meets a series of funding conditions that are not detailed in this press release. And given that we've been here before with the company, it didn't meet goals in the past, and that's why it didn't get the promised funds from Evergrande Health, it's way too early to pass judgment on this joint venture. And while each will hold a 50% ownership of the joint venture, the nine will ultimately have control over business operations. Will it be a success? Will Faraday Future sink or swim? Well, given its past performance, it's looking more likely to sink but I want you to let me know if you agree. Tell me below. That's it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.